So 81% of you guys right here on the YouTube channel said that you're making less than $100,000 per year. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to break down what I call the 100K listing agent blueprint. I'm going to walk you through step-by-step step, the exact framework for you to go from wherever you're at right now, whether that be with working with too many buyers, not enough listings, you're not making $100,000 a year, uh, to the point where you can build a listing-based business and you can do just that, earn over $100,000 a year. I'm going to break down the entire model for you. So let's jump into this, all right? Now, the first thing that we're going to look at, all right? So let me pull this up. And hopefully, yeah, you guys can see my screen now. All right. I'll break down this entire thing for you. This model, while there are five or six different ways to, to uh, go about your client acquisition or lead generation, this model I'm going to break down right now is going to be based on an outbound business model. What I mean by outbound is that you're actually, rather than just waiting for business to find you, you're going to go out there, you're going to be the one who initiates conversations with homeowners and that making it an outbound business. Okay. So doing things as an example, we'll get really, really clear. You can call homeowners. Number two, you can text homeowners. Number three, email homeowners. Number four, you can uh, DM homeowners on Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. When I, see, when I mean outbound is you're the one controlling the amount of activity initiating conversations with people. This is not an inbound business model, all right? So that's the business model. Now, when we talk about lead sources, if you were to ask me, okay, Brandon, I know you talk about all these different listing lead sources, which ones would you go after? I'm going to give you my five, all right? So when I coach a real estate agent, I always tell them, listen, we need a minimum of, of three lead sources, a maximum of five to make sure that no matter what the housing market is doing, you have a well-rounded uh, business model that has some different lead sources so that no matter what's going on in the market, you your business doesn't plummet. These are the biz these are the the sources I would go after. And by the way, I'm not sure if this is for you or not. You can decide. But if you're a real estate agent, you're watching this video and you're not earning at least $100,000 per year, you feel like you're overworked, you're underpaid, maybe even underappreciated, perhaps it's time to talk. If you're serious about growing your real estate sales business and you're open to having a conversation to determine if working with me as your coach makes sense or not, then click the link in the description beneath this video or simply go to reverseselling.com to book a call. New expired listings for sale by owners, old expired listings, and by old expired miss, uh, listings, I'm talking about homes that have come off the market in the past five years that have not relisted, absentee owners, and demographic prospecting. Demographic prospecting, to give you a couple of examples, is rather than this idea of just randomly cold calling homeowners and hoping for the best, is to actually create a list of prospects that are way more targeted. So as an example, that could be free and clears, that could be uh, downsizers, that could be uh, absentee owners, that could be uh, inherited properties, that could be probate, that could be divorce, that could be, you know, anything along those lines is what I mean by demographic prospect. This could be based on a certain neighborhood. This could be around a certain building. This could be around a certain uh, sale of a home where all the other homes are very, very similar. So by demographic prospecting, that is what I mean. All right. Now let's walk through what this model looks like. That if you do everything on the model, you will absolutely generate $100,000 or more. Now, I built this model off of the average commission of $10,000, all right? 
So I did a survey with all the agents that I coach and Ten thousand dollars is about the average. It's gone up. It used to be about seventy five hundred, but on average, right now with the current home prices, where the market is, it's about ten thousand dollars, which is the average commission. All right, so that's what this model is built off of. You can build this off of uh, numbers that are different based on the conversions. I'm going to walk you through right now. All right, let's first. So we talked about the the lead generation model. We talked about the five lead sources that I would prioritize. If I wasn't yet making $100,000 a year. Now let's talk about uh, how many people you actually have to talk to. So by contact, I mean that you're actually talking to a decision maker. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Is your, you look to have a conversation with uh, Bob Jones and you get a hold of Bob Jones. It doesn't matter what happens from that conversation. But you either uh, called Bob Jones, you texted Bob Jones, you emailed Bob Jones, you sent him a direct message, and you got into a conversation. Uh, and I forgot number five here, which is to door knock. You you knocked on his door, and you got a hold of Bob Jones. That is what we constitute as a contact. Okay, it's a conversation with a decision maker. In this model, you need to have. 2,800 of those conversations in your model in order to earn $100,000. If you speak with 2,800 people, okay, I'll show you exactly how this conversion breaks down. Based on that, okay, you're going to generate 10% of those will turn into what we call an actual lead. All right, what is a lead, you say, you ask? One, this is person this is a person that has clear motivation as to why they're moving. They have a reason on why they're moving. And no, it's not just because of interest rates are higher or low or home prices are higher or low. That that is not motivation. They have a certain life event that's happening. So, they have clear motivation on why they want to sell. They have verbalized that they will uh interview you. So they've told you, yeah, listen, when the day comes, we would be open to meet with you and we would like to meet with you and interview you to list and sell our house. They have verbalized that to you. That's number two. Number three, they have specific timelines. So they tell you, this is when we would like to move. Okay. And then uh, number four, they give you a valid email address. And so these are the things that we constitute as a lead. So what I'm talking about, okay, 2,800 conversation, 10% of those on average, okay, depending on your skill level, um, whether you're a coaching client or, or you're not, it will determine on where you are with a skill level, but about 10% will turn into an actual lead. So in this case, you've got to generate 280 leads in order to make $100,000. So again, we talked about lead sources. We've got our five lead sources, so we know who we're going to reach out to. We know how many we need to reach out to, and we know of those conversations, of those contacts, how many we actually have to turn into an opportunity. We know we need 280 leads in our database, in our pipeline, in order to make $100,000 a year. All right, now let's talk about uh, the next step of the funnel. We know that through proper lead follow-up, okay, and you have a proper follow-up system in your business, that 20% of the leads in your pipeline will turn into a listing appointment set. This is where someone says, yep, uh, we would be open to meeting with you. Uh, we want to meet with you. Here's the day we want to meet with you. And you've set an actual listing appointment. Now, again, depending on your ability to qualify appointments, your ability to disqualify conversations, your ability to set high quality appointments that stick, you, on average, you probably are going to have a 50% conversion from listing appointment set to listing appointment met. So in this case, you set 10, you meet five, you get five no-shows, five cancellations, you cancel them, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to set in order to make 100,000, you've got to set 56 appointments. You need you need to actually go on 28 
physical, in-person, face-to-face appointments, listing appointments. Now, at that listing appointment, again, in order to make this thing work, you have to, on average, you can convert half of those into a signed listing contract. And so depending on your skill level, you might have higher or lower, depending on your value proposition, depending on your risk reduction, depending on your pricing model, there are some caveats to how you convert at that appointment. But on average, we'd say 50%, this is what we've seen, about half of those will turn into a listing taken. So you need to take 14 listings. Okay, You need to take 14 listings in in order to make $100,000. Now, we know that not all of those are going to sell. Uh, Sometimes you take bad listings. Sometimes the seller changes their mind. They end up not moving, et cetera, et cetera. But on average, you should be able, based on this model, based on what we've seen, 70% of those will end up going to a closing table. 10 closings times 10,000 is 100,000, right? And so once you can kind of see this model going into effect, you say, okay, these are the numbers. As long as I do my part and I actually do the work and the work, let's be really, really clear in this video. This is the thing that when I walk an agent through this, um, it's like holding up a mirror because now all the excuses of, well, I don't know what to do and I don't know who to call and I don't know all those excuses go down the toilet because it's like, we talked about the lead generation model. We talked about all the tactics and strategies. We talked about the who. We talked about uh, uh, what a contact is. We talked about how many leads you need. We talked about how many set met. How many, we, we walked you through the entire thing. Now it's just up to you to do one thing. What is that one thing? Have conversations. Literally, it needs to be a choice. Well, not needs to be. It is a choice. It's a decision that you get to make every day as to do you have the conversations or do you not have the conversations? It's your work ethic. It's your character that will determine the outcome as it always does, of course. But now it's all clear. It's all laid out to you. So here's the, here's the, the interesting thing is if we break down 2,800 conversations, right? And we look at that and we say, okay, We say uh, 2,800 conversations, and most agents, um, most agents are working on average if they're if they're full time agents about between 240 250 days. So if we take uh, 2,800 divided by 250 working days, that comes out to 11 conversations per day. Well, here's the interesting thing: the number of people you talk to daily typically will represent the number of homes you sell annually. So if you break this down and you divide this by 250, it equals 11. And lo and behold, look at how many home sales that turns out to be. If you talk to 11 people 250 times, which would be 2,800 people, you will generate 280 leads. You'll generate 56 sets. You'll meet with 28. You'll take... 14, you'll sell 10 houses. That's what we know. So you could scale this up. You could say, okay, well, what if I wanted to double that and make 200,000? Okay, well, you need to turn this 11 into 20. And that 20 times 250 means you need 5,000 contacts for the year. And the numbers would play out here exactly how the conversions uh, and exactly what you would need to do. And you can do those numbers. Now, here's the other part of this entire thing. When we talk about scaling, most agents stop at number eight. They stop. Their business stops. It's a transactional business. It stops right here. And they just go right back to the grindstone and keep doing the thing over and over again, which is, that's fine. Agents that are going to be in this business long term, however, they create a flywheel business, meaning that every new client they bring on, every client they sell turns into more clients because they have a raving fan club program. And this is something that I help to implement with all the coach, uh, the agents that I coach, which, you know, it's a simple system, but very, very few agents actually execute on it. And so the system is to have a daily story every single day on all of your social platforms. 
It's to have a, a weekly live stream show on your social platforms, which turns into a weekly email newsletter. It's a, uh, monthly, uh, it's a monthly direct mail piece encompassing the housing market and recapping your show. It's a quarterly event. It's an annual CMA and real estate review, and it's an annual birthday program. Again, most agents don't have this in place. And so when you do that, you could turn one client into many clients. And so uh, I want to show you that how, although you may look at this and say, wow, I like the simplicity of it. I like the clarity of the model. It makes a lot of sense. That's great. But at the end of the day, it comes down to what I said before. Are you willing to do the work, the work, the rolling up of the sleeves and, and actually picking up the phone, knocking the doors, sending the messages? Are you willing to have the conversations at the top of funnel, right? At the top of funnel, which is, I just showed you this entire funnel. Are you willing to do number three? This is honestly shooting you guys straight. Don't get mad. It's just the honest truth. This is where it all goes wrong most of the time. It's in number three where the agent doesn't do the work. And then, of course, when they don't do the work, the rest of the funnel falls apart. 